Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 50th and the final lecture on economics management and entrepreneurship. Friends, if you recall, we had discussed on economics subjects, particularly on microeconomics and accounting engineering economy and costing for nearly 20 hours. Then we discussed various aspects of management for also nearly 25 hours. And the last 5 hours or so we devoted particularly on how to start new businesses how to get capital and such other things. So, in a way we have discussed various facets of entrepreneurship. In this last lecture, we shall talk about certain finer aspects of entrepreneurship. Let us see what we have to say on entrepreneurship, the finer points. So, today's lecture is entitled Entrepreneurship, the final words. To start with, we first give certain definitions. It looks like the origin of the word entrepreneurship is a French word entrepreneur, meaning to undertake. And the first person to use this word entrepreneur or entrepreneurship is Richard Cantillon in 1725, who used the word entrepreneur to mean the owner of a business enterprise who makes money through risk and or initiative. So, the three words that are critical in this definition given by Richard Cantillon is making money, taking risk by a person and with certain initiative. Later, the famous economist Schumpeter in 1935 defined the same word entrepreneur as a person who is willing and is able to convert a new idea or invention into a successful innovation. So, here he gave stress to conversion of an idea, a new idea to an invention or an innovation. The Knowledge Commission of India in its report in 2008 gave the following definition. Entrepreneurship is the professional application of knowledge, skills and competencies and or of monetizing a new idea by an individual or a set of people by launching an enterprise de novo or diversifying from an existing one, thus to pursue growth while generating wealth, employment and social goal. So, it is a little long definition of the word entrepreneurship, but basically it talks about converting a new idea, applying it to certain 
innovative work for the purpose of generating wealth, employment and social goal. Now, basically from these definitions, we see that entrepreneurship deals with innovation potential, risk taking propensity and venturing into new business for making profit. And this requires recognition of opportunity and generation of business idea to exploit the opportunity, marshalling and committing resources to pursue this opportunity and creating an operating business organization to implement the plan. Now, there are certain myths about entrepreneurs. And the idea that the entrepreneurs are doers, not thinkers, is really a myth. That they are born are not made, it is also a myth, it is not correct. All these things are not correct, but nevertheless, they are prevalent ideas in today's world. They are always inventors, which is not true. Their academic and social misfits is also not true. They must fit the profile of a successful entrepreneur is also a myth. All of them need money and luck, not always true. Ignorance is bliss for them. That means, if somebody makes an over analysis, it leads to paralysis. That sort of an attitude is also not correct. They need success, but experience high failure rates. This is also not correct. And that they are extreme risk takers is also a myth. So, these are certain myths which are unfortunately very prevalent in our society and they should not be taken at their face value. Certain characteristics of entrepreneurs and 15 of them have been listed here. They are totally committed, determined and so perseverance. They have a drive to achieve and grow they take, they consider different types of opportunities and they have a goal before them. They take initiative and personal responsibility. They try to solve problems always. They seek to find solutions and they use feedback of the results to change their approach to problem solving. They believe in themselves, they take risks and they have a tolerance for imprecision or ambiguity. They have a tolerance for fuel failure, they have high integrity and they can be reliable they display high energy and of course, they have creativity and they like to innovate, they have vision and lastly, they are self confident and optimistic. Now, these are 15 common characteristics of entrepreneurs. Now, there are certain challenges entrepreneurs face. One is a risk factor. Every entrepreneur faces financial risk, career risk and even risk at the family, social and psychological level. 
they undergo high stress because quite often they are left to themselves, their loneliness, they are completely immersed in their busyness and they have a need to achieve all these things put them in high stress and at the same time they have an overriding desire for success. They are highly optimistic to the extent of sometimes being unrealistic and sometimes they have a sense of distrust for others. So, these are different challenges that any entrepreneur faces. As we have told an entrepreneur has to be creative and has to be an innovator. So, let us spend some time on creativity and innovation. Creativity is the generation of ideas that result in the improved efficiency or effectiveness of a system. Whereas, innovation is the process by which entrepreneurs convert opportunities into marketable ideas. <clears throat> Entrepreneurs combine the two that means, they convert opportunities into marketable ideas and to innovations and of at the same time they improve efficiency or effectiveness. They combine creativity and innovation together. Now, there are two approaches to creative problem solving. One that adopts the already existing approach, the other who tries to be creative and the symptoms for an adopter are a little different from those that are that are taken or used by an innovator. An adopter employs a methodical approach, an innovator does not always use such approaches. An adopter solves rather than find problems, that means problems exist which an adopter solves. An innovator discovers problems, maybe future problems and solves them now. An adopter is concerned with refining current practices and innovator challenges the current practices. Adopter tends to be means oriented, how to do things. Innovator is more interested in what to achieve at the end. An adopter is does extended detailed work. Whereas, an innovator does not tolerate routine work he wants to do something new. Adopter is very sensitive to group cohesion and cooperation, but an innovator feels no need for such consensus and therefore, is often insensitive to others. So, here we see that an innovator is basically trying to find new ways of solving future problems and does not use the already used problems or the approaches that are being used to solve the present problems. He always looks for something new, certain innovative way of doing things and solving problems that are not recurring in the past, but also problems that can occur in the future. Normally, the creative process has got four phases. One is accumulation of knowledge. The second is 
assimilating that knowledge in the subconscious state of the mind. The third phase is the eureka factor where an idea strikes and the last phase is evaluating this idea and implementing it that is the creative process. Now, to actually implement or develop the creativity there are so many approaches. One is recognize relationships among objects, among processes, among materials, technologies and people. Developing functional perspectives that means, how certain needs can be satisfied. Using the facilities of the brain, human brain, the left brain and the right brain. In the next slide, we shall discuss a little more on the aspects of left brain and right brain. Eliminating mental blocks and developing a creative climate where management encourages creativity, there is open channel of communication. People are willing to accept change and enjoy getting and implementing new ideas. They are not averse to new ideas, that is a creative climate. Now, in the next slide, we shall see how the human brain can has been seen to contain two aspects. The left side of the human brain deals with logical, sequential, rational, analytical and objective aspects. It looks at, looks at detailed parts and it focuses on logical thinking, analysis and accuracy. Whereas, the right brain is not so logical, it is random, intuitive, holistic, synthesizing type, subjective and it looks at holes rather than parts, it focuses on aesthetics, feeling and creativity. So, you can see that the left brain deals with analysis more quantitative aspects, deals with data, deals with procedures, methods whereas, the right brain deals with synthesis, subjective approach to problem solution and holistically talks about problems and solutions. An entrepreneur should use both the aspects of the left and the right brain although it appears and entrepreneur is more oriented towards the right brain taking subjective view of things, looking at futuristic problems not always using methodical, methodical approaches, but it is good to have a combination of both objectivity and subjectivity. Now, let us talk about the innovation process. So long we were talking about creativity and different aspects of creativity. Now, we discuss about the innovation process. Most innovations result from a conscious purposeful search for new opportunities. Already this we have expanded in the past. Innovators go out, look, ask and listen. They not only look at the figures but also our people's needs, values and expectations. Most innovations are simple and focused. There are different types of innovation. The most elementary and the most fundamental is invention where a new product or a service or a process is created. The second type of innovation is expansion of an existing product, service or process. Third type of innovation is a duplication 
where you almost duplicate the idea, but with a little difference with a creative touch. And the last type of innovation is developing a new application altogether. So, these are different aspects of the innovation process. Now, let us look at certain principles of innovation. What an innovator basically does, we already now know, he challenges the status quo. He searches for new ideas, he makes the product process or service simple and understandable, he makes the product process or service customer based, he starts in a small way, but aims high, learns from failure, follows a milestone schedule. rewards heroic activity and he works and works and works. These are different principles of innovation. So, finally, it is hard work that pays. Now, we are talking about how to prepare oneself for a new venture. The first thing for preparing for a new venture is environmental scanning. As you already know, environment may consists of external environment and internal environment. The external environment can be thought of to consist of two aspects, one the industry stakeholder industry stakeholders and the society at large. The internal environment consists of culture that is beliefs expectations and values shared by the promoters, the members who would like to develop a new venture. So, how culturally oriented they are and what the industry in which they are wishing to start a venture is like and what the society at large is. So, these are these are to be studied and this is basically scanning the environment to see how you will position your venture. Then assessing economic environment is required. In this what are the things to know? The things to know is the general economic condition of the country condition of the labor market in particular if the venture requires a lot of labor to be put then the labor market situation has to be studied. Study the interest rates whether the interest rates are rising or stable. Look at the number of firms in the industry because that is the competition that you are likely to face. Also see how these farms are concentrated in a particular geographical location, the geographic concentration of the farms and also look at the government regulations particularly with regard to environment, taxation and other considerations. In this context, and in particular in the when you examine the industry environment, Porter's five force model is quite important. The five forces are 
that there are certain suppliers, they constitute a force, there are certain buyers, they constitute certain force, then there are new entrants to the industry apart from you and in the industry there are already certain competitors existing and of course, there is a threat coming from the substitutes of the products that you are thinking of providing. So, these are the five forces that are to be studied for the new venture. Now, here the details are given here for example, for the suppliers the power of the suppliers lies in the number of suppliers, the importance of materials and components of parts being supplied. For the buyers, how many buyers are there and the importance of the product to the buyers. For the new entrants, the economy of scale, experience and in what way their product is different, product differentiation. And for the substitutes, whether they are very close substitutes or whether for the price that they are available, they provide this value. And then among the competitors, you have to see how many firms are existing in the industry, what is their growth rate, whether excess capacity is existing. So, these things relate to the competitors. Now, these are the different aspects of industry environment, the five different forces, these are called five forces model given by Porter, a very important concept in strategic management that are studied here and that is very relevant to entrepreneurship. Then the community perspective. In the community perspective, we first look at the location. In the location, we look at the demographics, the customers, their distribution, their age, etcetera, economic base, standard of living, etcetera population trends and overall business climate. So, when, when we do the research for the location where our where the company or where the venture will be located, we have to look at these things. Also, we have to look at how familiar the promoters are with the community or how the whether the community recognizes the need for the product and whether they know the promoters impacts the venture will have on the community, whether really the community needs the products and the services and to what extent the new venture will be able to satisfy the needs of the community. Special skills of the entrepreneur to nurture local contracts, to nurture local contacts, yeah that is right. So, if the promoters or the entrepreneur know some people to what extent he or she can make use of these contacts. Steps to strengthen local support and reduce local opposition. So, what sort of steps you will take to see that you strengthen your local support and reduce the opposition if any. And then one has to make a business plan. In a business plan, it is basically a written document that details the proposed venture. That means, it gives the details of the proposed venture. It is basically a roadmap 
for a successful enterprise. It helps the entrepreneur to view the project comprehensively, critically and objectively. And of course, it is a communication tool for the external stakeholders. So, the very important requirement to for an entrepreneur is to prepare a business plan and a business plan as it is mentioned it gives the details of what you are interested to do it takes care of the future pros and cons risks and opportunities the strategies that you are interested to take to take advantage of the opportunities and to get over the threats coming from the external environment and also it is a tool with which you can communicate with your external stakeholders in particular when you try to impress the local community, the local municipality, the local government and even the financial institutions to help you with funds, to help you get the place, to help you start a business this business plan is going to be very very important. Now, the business plan is normally it contains different sections and here a pro forma business plan is given and normally it has 10 sections. The first section is an executive summary of the business plan running into 2 to 5 pages and the last section is an appendix containing bibliography and other things. The other 8 sections from section 2 through section 9 talks about different aspects of a business plan. Section 2 deals with business description section 3 with marketing, section 4 with location, section 5 with management, section 6 financial forecast, section 7 critical risks, section 8 harvest strategy, section 9 the milestone schedule. Now, let us see section 2 and section 9, section 2 through section 9 in some detail. Section 2 is the business description, what exactly you are supposed to give there. Now, you are supposed to give a general description of the business, the background of the industry in which the business will operate how your corporation or your business will fit into the industry environment, what are the goals that you are posing for your business and what are the potentials that you are foreseeing, what is the uniqueness of the product or the service that you are offering. Now, this, these are the things that one should give in section 2 the business description. Section 3 talks about the marketing aspects, how you are going to market your product. There are two aspects research and analysis, the second is marketing plan. In the research and analysis paragraph, you are supposed to talk about the target market its size and trends, the competition that you are expecting to face and the estimated market share. In the marketing plan, you are expected to give sales and distribution, deals with to you are expected to deal with sales and distribution, pricing and advertising and promotion. Almost whatever we had covered in 
marketing management. The same thing you will have to now make a plan for your venture. Section 4 deals with location. Here you have three aspects identify location. In this you talk about what are the advantages of a particular location, the zoning and the tax aspects, whether it is close to suppliers that aspect also you discuss here and whether transportation facilities are available that also you mention here because transportation and location they are very closely related. Similarly, relation to supplying raw material supply is also quite important. So, in location you talk about these aspects. Now, we come to section 5 where we talk about the management team in which you say who are the key personnel who will be involved in managing the day to day affairs, the legal structure in which you say from where the money will be raised, then the ownership and the employment agreements and in C you talk about the board of directors, who are your board of directors, who are the advisors and the consultants. In section 6 you give a financial forecast in which whatever we had covered in our engineering economics and accounting they have to be now discussed here. The profit and loss statements and projection, cash flow and projection, break even analysis, cost controls and budgetary plans. These have to be covered in financial forecast in section 6. In section 7 we discuss about critical risks, the potential problems that you foresee that your venture will face, the obstacles and risks that are likely to crop up in the future and what alternative courses you have or what contingency plan you have made to overcome these problems, obstacles and risks. Section 8 basically talks about continuity of the business strategy, who would be your successor, how the assets will be transferred and how the business will continue to exist. So, these are the things to be covered in section 8 and lastly in section 9 you give a project schedule on which month which date you should be able to achieve your objective, what are the deadlines and milestones and how they are related. So, these are the things to be given in a business plan. A business plan is a very important step in starting a new enterprise or a new venture, it more or less gives you an idea, prepares you, prepares you to not only look into the future, but also make immediate plans to achieve whatever you have made, whatever plan you have made. So, it is a very, very important piece of document. Now, let us look at certain other aspects evaluation of entrepreneurial opportunities. Now, when an entrepreneur faces different types of opportunities, naturally he has to make certain evaluation of those opportunities and the common pitfalls in selecting the new ventures are the following. Sometimes evaluation is not done in an objective way, sometimes no real insight has been obtained into the market, sometimes inadequate understanding of the technical requirements or even financial understanding is poor, 
or the venture is not very unique in any way or certain legal issues are ignored. So, you can see the common pitfalls why new ventures are properly not selected could be technical, could be legal, could be financial etcetera. So, critical factors that should go into new venture development is that it must be unique and it should require less investment, growth potential for sales should be there, customers must be present, must be available to buy your product and you should be able to make the product available to the customers. Now, why new ventures fail? This is very important to know why quite often or sometimes new ventures fail. They may fail because of three reasons, three principal reasons marketing, financial and managerial. Marketing problems, you may be timing your product very poorly, there might be certain design problems, you may not have a good distribution strategy or you are not very clear in what you are trying to do or you are relying on only one particular customer. Unless you make a diversification, you will face quite a good amount of risk. There can be financial problems, you may not have sufficient capital, you may take too much debt. and you are unable to pay them therefore, there is a capital relationship problem. So, these are financial problems or you may have a managerial problem. You are the sole person who is looking into the venture therefore, the team approach is absent and therefore, there is a human resource problem. So, these are different reasons why new ventures may fail. Now, when we make an evaluation, we ask certain questions. These are the questions that should be asked to evaluate a new venture. Is it a new product or a service idea? Has a prototype been tested by independent testers? Has it been demonstrated in trade shows? Is the product service easily understood by stakeholders? What is the overall market? Has the market research been conducted? What distribution and sales method will be used? How will the product be made? Will the business concept be developed and licensed to others or developed and sold away? Can the company get the necessary skills to operate the business venture? So, these are certain searching questions that should be asked when we try to evaluate a new product or a new venture. We also sometimes make an internal profile analysis that is basically a strengths and weakness analysis, where we rate the factors in a 5 point scale. The factors are financial, marketing, organizational and technical and each factor can have a number of sub factors and these sub factors are rated in a 5 point scale. Now, we talk about 
in the business plan one has to make a feasibility analysis. In the feasibility analysis, we make technical feasibility analysis, marketing feasibility analysis, financial feasibility analysis, organizational feasibility analysis and competitive analysis. To be able to uh, see whether a new venture idea is actually feasible. To determine the feasibility of the planned new venture, one has to look at the feasibility, one has to make a feasibility analysis of the product, one has to see how the market opportunities and risks are taken care of, whether financially the idea is feasible, whether organizational capabilities are existing and personnel enough personnel that are required to do the work are available and whether it the competition it can take care of. So, feasibility analysis does not only mean financial feasibility analysis, one has to look at all these things to see whether the idea can actually be converted into a new venture. Now, between the technical feasibility and the market feasibility analysis, in the technical feasibility analysis we look into critical design specification starting from design specification to plant location. All that we have studied earlier they are considered design, durability, reliability, safety and standardization. In the engineering requirements we look at machines, tools, instruments and workflow. Product development we look at blueprints, models and prototypes. Product testing we look at lab and field testing. In plant location, we look at suppliers, customers and environment requirements. In the market feasibility analysis, we look at market potential. In this, we look at potential customers, market share, sales volume, sales price. In market testing, we look at sample selection, actual market test and market analysis. In market planning issues, we consider channels of distribution, promotional efforts, warehousing, packaging and price differentiation. All these things we have studied in detail in our earlier lectures. Now, the financial feasibility analysis, we look at financial resource requirements for fixed and current assets including working capital. We look for available financial resources, what are resources that are available. We may borrow, we look at potential sources of fund, we consider the cost of borrowing, we also look at the repayment conditions. We look at operation cost analysis in which we consider fixed cost, variable cost and projected cash flow. And we definitely consider the profitability analysis looking at break even or making break even analysis and internal rate of return. In organizational capabilities, we consider personal requirements, skills, managerial, individual responsibilities, organizational relationships, organizational development. And in competitive analysis, we look at existing competitors, size, financial resources, market, reaction of competitors and potential new competitors. Now, so long we were talking about various detailed aspects of entrepreneurship. Now, we see that once a new enterprise starts, as years roll by, it is expected that profit, revenue, productivity and profit would continue to grow. So, from a small start, the, the venture can actually grow in size to be more profitable, productive and depending on different circumstances, it may fail early or, or it may continue to grow or it may fail little late, later in the years or it may grow. All this 
depends on how effective how effectively the the entrepreneur changes his style or follows different strategies to match with the change in the environment so this calls for change strategy a company that started as a small enterprise may actually grow to a large corporation in a few years time all this depends on how well the entrepreneur is accommodating himself or changing his style and strategy taking care of the opportunities and the challenges coming from the environment now this is the transition to managerial approach so long the style of management was a one person entrepreneurial style the style must change to a professional managerial approach a functionally organized professional approach he must make a transition and that transition must occur in the growth stage this transition would involve participatory decision making process and it should institutionalize different responsibilities and authority of different persons it should work with the help of specialists there must be organization structure systems and procedures and there must be a professionally selected board of directors so friends in these 50 lectures on economics management and entrepreneurship we have discussed a wide variety of topics ranging from from microeconomics engineering economics costing accounting to different aspects of management such as planning coordinating and controlling and then talking about marketing management financial management then talking about different aspects of entrepreneurship such as how to start a new business how to source funds and then in today's lecture we talked about certain finer aspects of creativity innovation and finally we talked about the need and preparation and the structure of a business plan and in the last slide we said that if the entrepreneur has the stamina has the wisdom is ready to work take risks and makes all his plans well enough and implement them in true spirit and with the help of certain amount of fortune the or blessings of god most likely the entrepreneur would succeed and would grow and if it grows then he must change his style from a one person entrepreneurial style of management to a professionally managed group where specialists are used where there is standards procedures they are all written down where there are professionally managed organization unless this is done unless the person the entrepreneur changes his style of management to take care of the advantages and challenges coming from the environment the venture will fail i am sure those of you who have gone through this series of lectures would benefit in a big way but please remember there are many more other things in this area than what we have covered in the class in these classes there are pro, there are topics on project management on quality management on human resource management and similar such topics 
that we could not cover. And I am sure with the background that we have now given you, you will yourself read and educate yourself uh, on these uh, new, uh, new aspects that we have not covered and will actually be creative innovators and successful entrepreneurs. With this, thank you very much.